my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And what do we do? Well, we provide mentoring and training services for, for different mechanical engineering codes. And we provide equipment certification and re-rating services as well. We'd be pleased to help you. So let's continue with our slides. Welcome back to our part three, Brittle Fracture Assessment Study. And in this episode number three, we're gonna to continue to focus on level one assessments. And then we're gonna pay particular attention to example 3.3, which is a level one assessment uh, of a mat for a drum. And, um, and this example is found in API 579-2, and it, this includes a commentary I have about this example problem. So let's jump right in. In this particular example, we're gonna be looking at a, a level one MAT, which is a minimum allowable temperature for this material. And in particular, we're just going to look at the shell section so we don't have to get into the issues of governing thickness because the governing thickness is the thickness of the shell. And, uh, and also, the, it's just for a horizontal drum, which we sh was shown down below, something like that. And it's constructed to ASME Section 8, Division 1 of the boiler pressure vessel coat. It's one and a half inches thick or 37 millimeters. And the materials of construction are SA516 grade 70 N, which is a fine grain practice and it's normalized. The procedures for level one. Start with step one. This is what I call the decision process. Which of the following options are we going to follow? We have two at our disposal, two tools. The first one is the governing thickness and exemption curve method, option A. And the second one is impact testing. Uh, if there is actual test results showing the material testing, then we can follow that route. But in our particular example, we're following option A, which is the governing thickness and exemption curves. So as a reminder, as we talked about in the earlier episodes about minimum design metal temperature, the critical exposure temperature, which is outlined by the process, must be greater than the minimum allowable temperature, the MAT, and uh, for, the, for it to be acceptable. We use MAT because we're looking at each type of component. We put them all together and that becomes the minimum design metal temperature. So if the operating conditions change, API reminds us that a reassessment is required. The second part is if the inspection and maintenance is required per API 510 or NB23 or an equivalent. So if we continue, we have to review some rules, exemption rules and rules. Now, the first thing is Level one is, uh, is valid only for boiler pressure vessel code section eight, division one and two, and we've just confirmed that. The design allowable stress must be less than 25 KSI or 172.5 megapascals, and we've confirmed that uh, based upon the allowable stress for API 516 grade 70N. Now we'll continue looking at step 1.2, determine the uncorroded governing thickness. For a shell, it's relatively simple. So it's based upon the nominal uncorroded thickness of the plate. So we don't look at the actuals, we just look at for, for shells, just the nominal thickness. They try to keep it simple. And these rules are consistent across in the boiler pressure vessel code as well. So in this case, we're at 1.0 inches. And the formed heads, uh, this is not applicable. This is a minimum thickness this may be removed, may be used for formed heads. Piping components, 
different story, we have to subtract the mill tolerance to get those values. Step 1.3, we determine the material toughness. We do that by going to table 3.2 to determine which category we fall under. And this is a table listing and, and lucky in this example, 516 grade 70 is extremely common pressure vessel material, in, especially in Canada. And so we determined that we need to use a, a curve D. So the material toughness, we go to figure 3.4. And if there is, we're reminded that if there is no data available, then we're supposed to use curve A. In this case, we know, we, we know exactly what we're working with. With our steps, 1.4 MAT, we determined from figure 3.4, as we said earlier, we don't have flanges but we would have to set them to minus 29. And there's an exception with flange next if we have, say, for example, a forged nozzle. And then there's some exceptions in the, in the code for that. And the MAT is minus 48. Uh, if the material thickness is less than two and a half millimeters, and that's also found in section eight, division one, and two, I believe. And of course, this is not applicable. We have one inch. And for carbon steel nuts, we were supposed to use minus 48. This, of course, in this case, it's not applicable. We're going to look at step one, five, future MAT reduction checks. So we can use our curve and then continue. And these are some of the restrictions. So it has to be an API five, uh, P1 group one or a P1 group two material, which is basically your carbon steel material in order to be, a, to be considered. And your wall thickness has to be less than the one inch for group D materials. And there has to be no, uh, the post weld heat treatment has to be done and there has to be no subsequent work based upon that. Out our figure 3.4 and we've got our one and a half inch thickness. We go up to curve D and shown right there. And then basically we go right across and behold, we get the numbers. So curve D governing thickness 1.5, our mat is minus 14 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, minus 25. And there are tables also for metric. They just call it figure 3.4 M for metric. this assessment, you can tell that level one is, is just meant to be like a 15 minute type of, of analysis on a high level. Inspectors uh, can do this uh, and it can be part of the report. And uh, it's just sort of an initial just to see roughly where we are. What can we conclude? Well, we, we have a curve D and we, we used that curve D in figure 3.4, and we determined the mat was minus 14 degrees. And this was established uh, for a vessel section without any allowance for post-weld heat treat. Now we can, we could have, if we had this post-weld heat treating, we could have taken more advantage and dropped that temperature more. But in this case, uh, we stop at minus 14. If we want to, you know, sharpen our pencil, we can continue down with level to assessment. Anyways, we are done. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.